Perrier Terrail, better known as Chevalier de Bayard, may be the greatest knight you've never heard of. Why? Well, it's complicated. Much of his story shrouded in legend. Let's talk about these legends. The descendant of a noble family with a military tradition, Bayard was born at the Chateau Bayard, Dauphiné, near Pontchara, Isère, in southern France. He was the successor of three generations to have fallen in battle prior to him. The year of his birth was 1476. The Bayard family had established itself as a notable lineage in the region, and it is from here that Bayard would inherit many of his core traits. During the late 15th century, the upbringing of noble children, especially those destined for knighthood, followed a set pattern. Young boys from noble families were often sent to live in the households of more experienced knights or lords, where they would begin their education in the ways of knighthood. This early training included learning how to handle weapons, understanding the code of chivalry, and receiving a basic education in letters and courtly manners. As a nobleman, Chevalier de Bayard would likely have received this customary upbringing, serving as a squire. His childhood would have been marked by a focus on physical training, equipping him with the skills needed for a life on the battlefield. Moreover, he would have been instilled with the values of honor, courage, and loyalty, central tenets of the medieval chivalric code. The Dauphiné region, where Bayard hailed from, was a strategic and contested area during the Italian wars. This geopolitical context may have played a role in shaping Bayard's destiny as a knight, drawing him into the service of the French crown during a time of intense conflict. Like several other parts of Bayard's life, questions arise relating to the historicity of his many legendary deeds. His first notable action took place in during the Italian wars in 1494. The Battle of Fornovo in July 1495 is where Bayard first distinguished himself as a brave and skillful knight. The battle was part of the ongoing conflict between France and the Holy League, a coalition of European powers opposing French expansion in Italy. During the battle, Bayard served under King Charles VIII of France and was tasked with guarding the rear of the French army as it retreated. Recognizing the critical importance of the position, Bayard displayed remarkable courage and leadership successfully holding the rear against the pursuing forces of the Holy League. Bayard's actions at the Battle of Fornovo marked him as a rising star on the battlefield and earned him his knighthood along with widespread admiration. This early achievement laid the groundwork for his subsequent military exploits, showcasing his prowess. The Battle of Fornovo marked the beginning of a series of notable deeds that would define Chevalier de Bayard's illustrious career. It is also during these wars that his first legendary feat was spoken of. This first legendary feat is when he was challenged to a duel, only to find himself near death due to malaria. Refusing to reschedule, Bayard instead met his opponent, Alfonso de Sotomayor, while still suffering from the disease. Sotomayor was a Spanish knight of gigantic stature and endowed with Herculean strength. On the day of the duel, he had just recovered from the last attack of fever. After lying on the ground and having entrusted his soul to God, he went down to wait for his adversary. Sotomayor initially fainted at the tired Bayard, still trying to tire his opponent. Several times, he repeated the same overhead strike. The fourth time that the tactic was repeated, Bayard took advantage of the opportunity and lunged, skewering the uncovered throat of the Spaniard from below with the tip of his sword, then finishing him by planting his dagger in one eye. The Frenchmen watching duel shouted in triumph, but Bayard ordered them to be silent, since he did not want death to be celebrated. He went to a church where he began to pray on his knees for the soul of the dead. Duels were an integral part of the knightly culture, often used to settle disputes, defend honor, or simply showcase individual prowess on the battlefield. The 16th century, during which Bayard lived, saw a continuation of this tradition. Another of Bayard's legendary tales is supposedly the single-handed fending off of 200 opponents to defend a bridge, becoming known as the Knight Without Fear and Beyond Reproach. This took place during the Battle of Garigliano, 
in the autumn of 1503 at the Garigliano River as the French army moved towards Naples. The battle ended in disaster for the French, leading to a rout that was catastrophic for the army of Louis the Thunes. The sentries noticed the attack too late, and the commanders, caught off guard, did not have time to organize an effective defense, and so fled, pressed hard by Italian and Spanish cavalry. Bayard, armed with sword and spear, then placed himself in the middle of the bridge across the river, challenging alone about 300 or 400 Spaniards without retreating. Around the night rained arrows, spears and spades, but he, dodging them, continued to repel all who climbed the bridge to face him, until his friend Belabri rushed to pull him away from there to take him to safety. Bayard's intervention made it possible to cover the retreat of the French army and gave them time to place the artillery to be ready to face the Spaniards and start the counterattack. This feat contributed significantly to his legendary status as a knight utterly without fear, so much so that Pope Julius II himself tried in vain to secure his services. It should be noted that another of his legends originates during this period. Supposedly, Bayard stormed an enemy city single-handedly. We believe that this refers to the siege of Brescia in 1512. Here, Bayard led a wedge of dismounted men-at-arms against the defenders, himself at its tip. Several times, the French assault was thrown back. Each time, Bayard rallied the French forces and led them in renewed attacks. His boldness at last resulted in a severe wound to the thigh, but not before the defenses were breached and the French entered the town. Perrier Terre was more than simply a warrior, however. He became a highly skilled commander. Arguably, his crowning military achievement was the Battle of Mézières. When war again broke out between Francis I and Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor, Bayard, with 1,000 men, held Mézières, which had been declared untenable against an army of 35,000, and after six weeks, compelled the imperial generals to raise the siege. This stubborn resistance saved central France from invasion, as the king did not have sufficient forces to withstand the Holy Roman Empire. The French celebrated the achievement, and the invaders were driven out in 1521. The parliament thanked Bayard as the savior of his country. The king made him a knight of the Order of St. Michael and commander in his own name of 100 gendarmes, an honor until then reserved for princes of the blood. However, chivalry was central to Bayard, both on and off the battlefield. He not only behaved honorably toward enemies, but also engaged in charity, doing his utmost for the recovery of prostitutes, the poor, and those personally assisted the sick of the plague. While his fellow countrymen indulged in violence and raids, Bayard always remained respectful towards the weak and the vanquished, doing his utmost for their defense, and burned with furious anger in the face of all cruelty and injustice. He died in 1524, guarding the rear of his army at the passage of the river Sessia between the towns of Romagnano Sessia and Gattignara. He repulsed the foremost pursuers, but in was mortally wounded by an arquebus ball. He died in the midst of the enemy, attended by Pescara, the Spanish commander, and by his old comrade Charles, Duc de Bourbon, who now fought on the opposite side. Charles is reported to have said, Ah, Monsieur de Bayard, I am very sad to see you in this state. You who were such a virtuous knight. Bayard then answered him, Sir, there is no need to pity me. I die as a man of honor ought, doing my duty. But I pity you, because you are fighting against your king, your country, and your oath. His body was restored to his friends and interred at saint martin d'Aire, leaving behind a daughter Jeanne Terrel, and unrecorded noblewoman wife.